If you're a Power Apps developer and you've been building Canvas apps and you don't know that the app OnStart is going away, well, it is. Bad news, Microsoft is deprecating the feature and there are some things right now that you need to do to start moving your apps away from using the app OnStart. Recently, Microsoft has started to roll out changes related to the deprecation of the app OnStart property in Canvas apps. This is actually a pretty big deal. We've actually uh, created a, quite a bit of content and videos where we're using the app OnStart property ourselves to do certain things and people are using that and we're actually starting to see some feedback about like, oh, I no longer can have access to the app OnStart property. How do I run the OnStart property? And things like that. Well, what's happened is uh, Microsoft's changes have made it to your tenant and so you're starting to experience some of the, the ramifications of that change. And so today we're gonna talk about some of the ways that you can migrate away from that as well as why it's important to start moving your applications away from using the app OnStart. Let's first talk about what changed and then we'll talk a little bit about why. Specifically, the thing that changed is Microsoft has deprecated the use of the app OnStart property. Uh, so if you're like me, you've been building Canvas apps for a while, you probably use the app OnStart property for uh, setting up collections, pulling data in, setting up global variables for your application, maybe even navigating to a home screen. Uh, Microsoft has basically said, don't use that anymore. We want to move to another method. Um, not all of those methods are really in place yet, um, but people are starting to, mo to move away from that. Uh, fortunately, you can use that method for a little while longer. There's a, a retired feature um, in the settings for your Canvas application where you can kind of keep that on while you're migrating. Um, but ultimately, you should be migrating. The main reason why we need to migrate is for performance. So what we figured out is that with all of this app loading and data loading that we tend to like to do, we can get away with it in the app on start. It can cause performance problems for uh, our Canvas app, particularly when we're trying to load the application. So some of the very specific impacts that this will have on your Canvas apps are things like you cannot use the navigate function in the app on start property anymore. So even if you're still going to use the app on start property, navigate is no longer an option there. So you have to find an alternative. Um, Fortunately, Microsoft has created some alternatives for us that we can use, uh, one being the start screen property. Um, in addition to that, you might be wondering, well, where do I load my global variables? Where do I load my data for my application if I was doing it there? Unfortunately, Microsoft hasn't completed the picture for us, but there are some workarounds to that that I'm gonna show you today. So first things first, let's talk about how to deal with that navigate function that you might have in your app on start property. What Microsoft has conveniently done for us, um, so if you're familiar with this at all, um, and you look at your app on start property, you will have maybe a navigate function maybe at the end of all of the setup that you're doing, um, just like I have here where we're navigating to our gallery screen. Well, this has a little red squiggly under it and you'll notice our app checker um, tells us we have an error in our formula. And indeed, it doesn't like that we're navigating in our app on start. So if we go, take a look at that and see what we need to do. It's actually a pretty easy fix. Um, we can simply remove this to get rid of that flow checker issue number one. And then the new convenient property on the app object itself is actually called start screen. Um, and so this is really, really kind of simple, stupid. Um, we can simply enter our screen name here that we want to navigate to, and that's all there is to it. Okay, and as I said, that is really quite simple, stupid to do. But what if we want to do something a little bit more advanced? So let's say we're doing like deep linking or something like that and we need to have the user go to a specific screen based on some parameter that comes in. Um, so we can make a simple change to this and let's say we're receiving a, an ID parameter uh, as an example. Um, we can simply come in here and enter an expression um, that will check for that ID parameter and then route us to a particular screen. So if um, we're going to check if it's blank or error, and we're gonna look for a parameter, as I mentioned, called ID. And if that is empty, then we're gonna take the user to the gallery screen, because we don't know what item in particular they're looking at. Otherwise, we're gonna take them to our form screen. And just like that, we can actually route the user to a particular screen based on some condition that we have access to early in our application. So 
a parameter that comes in the query string is something that we have access to early. We can use that to take the user to someplace in our application. Okay, so that's all well and good, but what happens in the scenario that we need to do more than just switch to a particular screen based on some early value uh, that we maybe get from a parameter? Let's say we need to load some data, maybe pull some data in from SharePoint or some other location, work on some collections, do some global variable setup for our application. There are all kinds of things that we might need to do. Where can we do those things? And this is the place where Ultimately, I think Microsoft is going to have a better solution in the long run and a, a real answer for this. But right now, um, there are a variety of workarounds for this, and this is just one that I have used uh, with success um, in the Canvas apps that I've built. So the first thing that we do is we uh, get ourselves a dedicated loading screen. Um, so you'll see I have a loading screen created here in my application. I've got my header and footer um, and really uh, nothing else to it. Uh, in this particular case, once we have that loading screen, we're going to go back to our app start screen property, and we are going to basically now always route the user to the loading screen. So whenever our application loads up the first time, that's where they're going to go. So we're going to take them there first, and then on this loading screen, we want to do a few things. Um, one is we're going to load of all of our data, so we're going to do all of that kind of stuff. So I'm going to go grab the stuff that was in my app on start, over here, and I'm going to grab all that information, all that data that I was setting up, and I'm going to make sure uh, that we're actually setting that up in the on visible now of this loading screen. So we can actually take advantage of that. So when the user loads this up, it becomes visible. We can actually load some data. So on this particular screen, we're going to jump to the on visible property, and we're going to have that same data loaded here. So we've got some context uh, for our, our user, user experience, so our button colors and things like that we're setting up. We've got some sample collections um, and things like that. Okay, so now that we've got our uh, data loaded in our on visible property for the loading screen, there's a few other things we want to do to actually bring this together and make this work. Uh, one thing to do is while we're loading, it might take a little bit of time. So we're going to actually throw a little message and a, some sort of motion graphic up on the screen for the user. Um, so to do that, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to grab, I think I have a spinner animation that we're going to just stick in the middle of our screen. And then I'm going to throw a label on here as well. And we'll center align this, give ourselves a little bit of room. And we'll give it some text. Give the user a little message. We'll make it a little bit more prominent. Okay, so that's all well and good, but how do we actually get this thing to do what we want it to do and take the user to the screen we, we need to take them to? So. In order to actually trigger that, uh, we are going to add an additional control. We're going to add a timer. So we're going to stick our timer on here, and we're going to set up a few properties for this timer. One is I really only need this to be like one second long. I don't need it to be very long. Um, we want it to auto start. So that means whenever it, the page loads and that timer is there on that screen, it's gonna just automatically uh, try to start itself. All right, so now that we've set it to auto start, we want to actually trigger the timer to start when our data gets loaded. So in order to do that, we're gonna go back into the on visible property of our loading screen, and we're gonna set an additional variable, a global variable that's gonna basically indicate whether or not our application is loaded. So we're gonna call it is app loaded and right now at the beginning it's not but once we do finish loading all of our data it is going to be loaded so down here we're going to say set to true okay so once this is true um, we're actually going to use that as the trigger for when our timer will actually kick off so if we go to the start property of this timer, we go to our advanced, and look for, we'll go ahead and use the search function. 
There we go. And so you'll see that this is a simple Boolean, true or false. I'm simply going to set this to our is app loaded. So what that's going to do is our loaded variable starts as false, so we're not doing anything with our timer, but as soon as it's set to true, it should trigger the timer. The one second will click off the timer, and then we can do something when the timer ends. All right, so in addition to setting whether or not our app is loaded uh, in our on visible for our loading screen, we want to do an additional piece, piece of work here to get our parameter from the query string. So if you remember, we were pulling that in before to decide which screen we wanted to take the user to. We're going to pull in some of that information now so that we have it preloaded so that we can make a decision with it um, to trigger where we're going to take the user later. Um, so to do that, we're simply going to set that variable. Um, set, we're going to set whether or not our asset or our item is, is selected um, if we get that value in the query string. So um, that same, actually have it in my clipboard. So instead of doing one of these, we're basically going to do a set operation. So if it's not empty, we're going to do that. Um, and I'm going to set another variable for fun. Okay, so if we actually have an ID in our query string, we're going to pull that in, and then we're going to say that the item has been is actually been selected. Um, so then that's going to help us route uh, when we need to. All right, so then once we've basically got our parameter value set so that we can use it in our form screen if it's been set, uh, when we take the user to it, we need to, uh, in our timer, uh, we have our timer basically being triggered when the is app loaded variable is set to true. So that happens in our on visible of our loading screen. But then the next thing that we need to do is after that one second ticks off of our timer, we need to actually do something in our on timer end. And so in this particular case, um, if our item has been selected, so if the user is passed in a parameter, we're basically going to navigate to the form screen. Otherwise, we're going to navigate to the gallery screen. All right, and so once we have that in place, if we actually play this, we should see it navigate to the gallery screen. So I pass nothing in in the query string. Let's take a quick look. Um, let's save and publish this. And actually, one more thing I want to make sure of. I'm going to go to our form screen and verify what it is loading. So it's actually looking at the parameter, um, and it's setting its own variable. So you had that already in place. Um, so that will work. Um, but if we actually publish this, and then we play this application in the wild, um, so you'll notice up here I've got the application uh, preloaded. This one we're passing an ID into it, but let's go ahead and remove that ID and see if it takes us where we expect it to go. It does. And if we put an ID in to the query string, and this time we'll go to two, it actually loaded up a different asset. You'll see we've got this little piece of debug info at the top that tells us what the parameter ID was. That's just a little bit of helpful tidbit of information. So that's pretty much it. That's a simple way. It's, it's a workaround that I've used in several of the Canvas apps that I've built to be able to load data and then decide what I need to do next um, without the use of the app on start and that ability to navigate from it. Hopefully this was helpful in giving you some ideas on how you can move your applications away from using the app on start property. I'm actually really looking forward to see what Microsoft brings in the future when it comes to giving us an alternative uh, to loading global variables and data collections and things like that in something other than an on-visible property of a loading screen. And so when those new changes become available, we'll be sure to post an update with a video. Uh, and if you're interested in that, be sure to like or subscribe below. 
Um, we also have learning content on our website that is available for a variety of topics. And we want to also remind you of an office hours session that we do the first Wednesday of every month. Um, you're welcome to come and get yourself unstuck with any Office 365 questions you might have. Last but not least, we just want to drop a quick reminder that we have a new intro to Power Apps course available to help you get oriented to the uh, Power Apps environment and building your first Canvas app. And you can find a link to all of these things in the description below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.